I'll be honest, I don't think about the long sword combos too much. So I'll put up on my channel, the community feed, what tips do you guys want to see from this game? Because I think that there's not much to talk about, but it looks like I'm wrong. Somehow you guys are still playing this game. Anyways, Todd Bowman asks for tips on using the longsword, which I've already talked about in my five tips for the longsword. So if you haven't watched that video, be sure to give it a watch. The link is down in the description box below or on the top right corner of the screen. But I guess I'll talk more in depth into how I use the longsword and how I find it pretty simple. Now this video only shows how I use the weapon and you should expect that I'm no master at using the weapon. I'd say I'm quite average at using it, which means that I can still make mistakes when using the longsword. However, I can at least say that I can comfortably use this weapon against a couple of monsters. Not every monster, just a couple. When I use the longsword, I really don't think too much about the combos. I don't go up to the monster spamming my attacks or combos at the start of the fight. I firstly think about gaining energy for the gauge, whether that be me spamming the triangle circle buttons on the PlayStation controller or the Y and B buttons on the Xbox controller. If I can at least get energy for the gauge, that's when I can start doing stuff with this weapon. Although I don't really spam those buttons a lot, I mostly end up doing the special sheath into EI slash when I start my fights. Or if I know the timing of a monster's roar, then I hit the monster either with a thrust or the opening attack, and then go straight into a force hit slash. The reason why I do this is because the monster's roar counts as being attacked. I'll talk more about the force hit slash later on. Now as for the reason why I like to start with the EI slash, is because it can help with constantly gaining energy for the gauge. That way, I don't really need to attack the monster a lot. I can get away with a couple jabs here and there, since the EI slash's effect will help me gain energy over time. If I have the weapon sheathed, I would start with the opening attack, then go straight into the special sheath to EI slash. Whereas if I had the weapon unsheathed, I would go with a thrust into a special sheath. Or while I have my weapon unsheathed, I do the fade slash to help me gain a chunk of energy because this move gives you the most energy compared to other attacks. I could do the step slash since it also gives the same amount of energy, but there's a reason why I prefer the fade slash which I'll talk about in a bit. Or even better, I can combine the EI slash along with the fade slash to get max energy. It's pretty simple. I also tend to add a few jabs to get max energy really fast. Okay, now I've gathered energy. What's next? Well, firstly, you gotta like the video and subscribe to the channel for more of my videos. Okay, but really, the next thing to do is the Spirit Round Slash so that you can level up the gauge. This move can only be done after performing the Spirit Blade Combo or the Foresight Slash. The Spirit Blade Combo is quite simple. You just mash the R2 or RT button, as long as you have energy in the gauge. Which is why I do those things I already mentioned. I tend to do this combo whenever I see an opening or when I know I'm at a good distance away from the monster. Even though I completely miss my attacks, the only thing that matters is leveling up the gauge, which is done by the last attack of the combo. Sure, it would be better to land the Spirit Blade combo's attacks, but for the sake of leveling up the gauge, I would do this instead of wasting time trying to find an opening. I also tend to do the Fade Slash before starting the Spirit Blade combo. The reason why is because it shortens the combo, so instead of pressing R2 or RT 4 times, I can just press it 3 times after the fade slash. Another thing I like to do to shorten the combo is by sliding off a slope, or jumping off a ledge. Sliding off a slope shortens the combo to 2 R2 or RT buttons meaning I just need to press R2 or RT twice. Jumping off a ledge shortens it to three R2 or RT buttons, making it the same as the fade slash way. Just remember, all we're trying to do is make sure that the spirit round slash hits the monster, whereas doing the foresight slash requires timing and predicting when the monster is about to hit you. This move can only be done when you have energy in the gauge, you have done an attack, and you're about to get hit from a monster's attack. You can still perform the move without energy, but you won't be able to counter an attack and do the round slash. You'll basically get smacked by the monster, making you look dumb in the process. If you don't know how a monster moves, 
then doing the foresight slash will be quite difficult. Even I have a hard time doing this move. The best way I found for doing the foresight slash is by doing the thrust attack by pressing circle B before using the foresight slash. Of course, once you get good enough, you can perform the foresight slash after any attack that you do. However, if you're still getting used to the longsword, I suggest doing the thrust. It's much easier than the other attacks. Also, try not to mash your attacks too much. Try to take your time because each attack gives you a small window for you to decide to maybe add a foresight slash after an attack. Which is why I tend to slow down my attacks a bit when I see the monster about to do an attack. Or I try to speed it up because the foresight slash can only be done after an attack. So if you miss the timing, then you're gonna get clapped by the monster's ass cheeks. After any round slash, I do the special sheath quite a lot. That's because instead of putting the sword away from the round slash, you can go into a special sheath to do an EI slash or the EI spirit slash. This way you can still have your weapon out rather than sheathing it away. After repeating the process of leveling up the gauge until it is at max level, what do I do next? For me, there's three things that I do. One, I try to keep the gauge on the max level, along with having energy in the gauge, meaning I keep doing the spirit round slash by countering or performing spirit blade attacks. Or I perform the helm breaker, but I will only do this when I find an opening. If there's no opening, then I either wait until the monster stops, or I continue keeping up the spirit gauge. Or I be reckless and just go for it no matter what, which is stupid and then I end up getting killed. I know it's a dumb idea, but I just want to do the move because it just looks cool. Or the third thing that I do is perform the EI Spirit Slash, which is another counter, but more powerful than the Foresight Slash. However, the EI Spirit Slash is a bit harder to do since the timing of this move is different compared to the Foresight Slash. Also, if you miss the timing, the gauge's level will drop, which means you're gonna have to level up the gauge again. Oh, and you'll get hit if you mess up, of course. I tend to miss this move quite a lot. All I know is that the timing is when you're about to get hit. Whereas if you compare it with the Foresight Slash, the Foresight Slash counter window is after you get hit. If I were to draw a weird diagram where there's three lines on the timeline, the first line would be when the monster starts attacking you. The second line would be when the monster hits you. And the third line would be when the monster is just getting out of its attack animation. The gap in between the first and second line would be where the EI Spirit Slash would work. And the gap between the second and third line would be for the Foresight Slash. That's how I see the timing of either one. Of course I might be wrong on this, so maybe don't take that into account maybe. But I do feel like it, like, it does that, when I'm using the longsword at least. Out of all those three things that I do for when the gauge is at max level, I mostly do the Helm Breaker because let's face it, it's cooler. Sure, the EI Spirit Slash feels good when you nail it perfectly, but the Helm Breaker feels better and easier to do. Also, after doing the Helm Breaker, I go back into the Special Sheath and do the EI Slash, just so I can carry on my attacks. Unless the monster moves away, then I guess I just roll out after doing the Helm Breaker, since there's no need to go into the Special Sheath. If the monster is down and I'm free to do any attack, the first thing I do is depending on whether my gauge is on the highest level. If it is on the highest level, then obviously it's time to do my favorite Helm Breaker. But if the gauge isn't on the max level, then you gotta level up the gauge. The fastest way I level up the gauge when the monster's down is to do a Thrust, Special Sheath, EI Slash, Fade Slash, then finish up with a Spirit Blade combo. Now don't forget about using armor skills to improve on the Longsword's gameplay. I use Focus and Power Prolonger to make sure that I can quickly max out on gauge energy and keep my gauges level active for a longer time. Basically, here's my thought process on using the longsword. Get energy in the gauge by doing thrusts, fade slashes and the EI slash. I try to avoid doing the overhead slash a lot because of its slow animation. If the monster is about to attack, I do a foresight slash to easily level up the gauge. If there's an opening, consider whether this will be a chance to do the spirit play combo. Once the gauge is at max level, try to find another opening where you can do the helm breaker. Otherwise, I can try to do the EI spirit slash to counter the monster. Afterwards, you just have to loop over the process of regaining energy and maxing the gauge's level. I also make sure that I perform the special sheath after any round slash or helm breaker attack. 
That way I can either have my weapon still out after a round slash, or I can just fluently move into another attack after a Helmbreaker. Just remember that the special sheath move can only be done if you have the Iceborne DLC. Meaning that if you don't have it, then you can't do any move involving the special sheath. So stuff like the EI slash and the EI spirit slash. That is how I use the longsword. Let me remind you that this is just how I use the weapon and that you can play with it in your own way. I'm also not a master at the game. I'm just an average casual gamer that just knows how to use the weapon. I hope you guys found the video useful in some way. If this video gets 40 likes, then I'll think about making another guides and tips for Iceborne. So be sure to give the video a like. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to continue seeing more of my videos. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. I'm scared. I'm scared. Please, I just want to get up here. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate this guy. <laughs> I just wanted to get up. <laughs>